Hi everyone, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a sketchbook tour since I haven't done this for a long time. This is going to be quite a huge one because I like to work on a few sketchbooks at a time. I just have this weird unsystematic system that works for me when it comes to using my sketchbooks. So let's get right into it. So these are the sketchbooks that I have accumulated so far in the last couple of years. Some of these are doubles, but they have different uses. I'm going to go over these three sketchbooks first, and these are just normal sketch paper. They're fairly thick though for drawing paper, which is why I like them. And I sometimes do a bit of watercolor here as well, but of course I'm not able to use different effects on it. But these are mostly for my notes, ideas, as well as doodles and very rough sketches. The quality paper of this one is sort of like off-white. These books are very cheap in Jakarta, something equivalent to 2.5 USD more or less. And because it's so cheap, I really don't mind doing whatever on it. And that for me is kind of liberating because I don't really want to be wasting something that is a bit costly. So I don't mind just scribbling, writing notes, doodling, writing ideas and things like that. This other one though, I treat the same but it is a bit more expensive. The paper is better, it's a bit thicker and it's a bit more white but I just got this because they ran out of the other one. <laughs> This next one is my watercolor sketchbook. I tend to make my own sketchbook so I can control the size and thickness. This one is an A5 size with 200 GSM paper. And this is my watercolor sketchbook. I do the same ideation process, but it has more watercolor doodles and trials before I paint and film the real thing using my other watercolor sketchbooks. I also finished this one, so I made another one that I just started, but I'm not going to include that in the sketchbook tour. These three may look the most familiar to you guys because these are my go-to sketchbooks for a lot of my tutorials. The left one has my older tutorials a couple of years back where I broke down the colors and shapes for simple paintings and I find that the landscape orientation is very good for that. The right one I mostly finished last year and the square one in the middle I don't use enough of but I'll try to paint more in this one. I think I'm going to begin with my oldest sketchbook. I've probably had this for two years now. As I mentioned, I write down notes, ideas here for YouTube and also Skillshare. You might also notice that these sketchbooks are linked together, so I may have the same drawings across all of the sketchbooks as I'm practicing or doing trials. So this is probably the biggest example. I remember filming this three times on top of the trials and practices I did beforehand in order to get the many steps to be more manageable to understand. These tutorials that I make are not usually the natural way for me to paint because that's actually quite confusing for beginners to follow along to since when you're used to painting you just know what to adjust or try out here and there naturally and you just experiment along the way and keep building upon it and make as many layers as you feel the need to and that sense is something that you need to build as a beginner so from here hopefully you can see my personal behind the scenes and the evolution of the techniques before I get to my final painting. Here if you guys follow me on Skillshare, these are the doodles before I get to the finished painting stage and if anyone suggests a certain subject matter, sometimes I need to also learn it myself first. So I do a lot of studies of simplifying shapes and techniques that would suit my way of painting. You might also see that this sketchbook tour is a bit different compared to my older one. This one has mostly my YouTube and Skillshare paintings because I don't actually have that much time to paint for myself these days, but I do have one book that is not included here which has my personal food illustrations. It's still very far from being finished because as I mentioned, I don't really have much time. And I personally also like to add more details in the painting which takes longer to finish compared to my tutorials. So I'm not going to be including this in the sketchbook tour since it's still very far away from being finished, but I'll definitely share it with you guys when I finish the sketchbook.
You might notice here that the hanging plant doodles are from a recent tutorial. That's because this sketchbook was within closer reach, but the rest of the sketches are quite old. When you see my tutorials, the paintings might look polished, but the sketchbook probably shows most of my ugliest drawings and paintings. So I hope you guys can endure looking at it. This next one is the start of one of the most popular videos of this channel. I wanted to add more movement to the painting like the one at the bottom, but I decided to just do a simpler version so it's a bit easier for beginners to understand. This next sketchbook starts off kind of funny. If you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know that I had this period where my skin condition got really bad and I had to learn to use my left hand somehow. So here are some random practices writing random stuff down. I also use this sometimes to teach my private students. So the one on the right here was one of the lessons where I painted a random bread shop with her. It was actually really fun to do and I kind of forgot about it, but I think I'll draw more of these. I had a lot of fun painting random shapes together for this one. Here's also another one I did with my student. Uh, you'll see some really random drawings of characters and I just find that these simple drawings are always good practice for beginners to break down two-dimensional shapes and trying to get the accuracy you need to complete the drawing. I think I did quite a bit of private teaching on this book and this one is a sack of fruits I painted with oil pastel. In Indonesia, this is a medium that we use uh, at school. So I like to include these once in a while for my students. I like to also do compositional sketches here for my personal food illustration and at the bottom you will see a familiar one of the butterfly pea flowers. This will actually go across a couple more sketchbooks since I had difficulty figuring out the shapes for them and you'll just see a bunch of YouTube stuff for the rest of these. Oh, this one is a random one from another one of my students who wanted practically a circular hamster. I don't know kids these days, but yeah. And this one is just from my Skillshare, one of my owl classes. I always have difficulty drawing animals, so this one took a few tries to figure out. And this one is probably my favorite page of this sketchbook. I wanted to learn how to draw sparrows and it was so much fun trying to play with angles once I figure out the pattern, but sadly I haven't really had time to explore further with paint. Here you'll see it's getting closer to my recent works. Here are some of the trials I used for my autumn themed tutorials. And on the right are my rough ideation for last year's Christmas videos. These are the tiny sketches I made before creating the full large version of the gouache painting. And at the bottom are just some gummy bear sketches I did to help my friend visualize something for her photography assignment. And I think the rest of these are just sketches for a couple of my Skillshare classes, YouTube tutorials, and more private teaching paintings. And the rest of these are still empty. I'm going to be using the rest of these and I don't think it'll take long for me to finish this one. Here's another one of my rough sketchbooks. And this one I barely use because I already got my hands on the other sketchbook before I finish this one. But it basically has similar content.
Here's another one of those oil pastel paintings that I did with one of my students. And I think after this is just the trees that I drew out for the tree doodles I did on January. Next is my actual watercolor sketchbook where I paint more than the previous sketchbook, which is somewhat the second stage of my system. But not really because I just do whatever I feel like in the end, but I think it's pretty straightforward and you'll also see a bunch of things linked from the previous sketchbook. Those are some of my recent tree doodles and as you can see sometimes I just jump from page to page if I see any empty spots sometimes I just fill it in depending on how much paper space I need and yeah there are really no rules this next one is a bunch of skies that I painted for the cloud tutorial that I did recently I did not know how to approach this and I didn't really even have a vision of what I wanted to paint and this was the first painting that I ever did. So as you can see, I do really jump around a lot in this sketchbook. And yeah, it took me around 8 tries until I got to the stage of the final tutorial. I only had these couple of pages left, which is why I kind of jumped to the recent tutorial. So from here on, you'll just see a bunch of my older works again. Sometimes for landscape paintings, I do have to write down notes for myself, especially in the beginning since I'm very new to it and you do have to work fairly quickly. So yeah, here are just some examples. I still really like this piece with gouache that I did. I've never really done anything this loose before with gouache and it was just really fun. Here are just a bunch of small landscape paintings I did last year as practice for the wet on wet technique. And now the watercolor sketchbooks which I mostly use for my YouTube tutorials. I'm going to start with the oldest one first. This contains work from 2018 to beginning of 2019. I think I even featured this, a little bit of this, in my first sketchbook tour when I just started the sketchbook so it only had a couple of pages done. But now it's completed along with the others. I also made mistakes and trials sometimes on these books. So you might see repetitions, but I think all in all, it doesn't really need much explanation. These mostly contain artworks that you guys may have already seen before if you've been here for a while. All these watercolor sketchbooks that I'm showing you today are the ones that I made and you might have noticed from this one and actually also the one that I'm going to show you after this. They are all mixed paper sketchbooks. I used to like the idea of including different types of papers. So as you saw before, 
this watercolor paper in the beginning of this sketchbook I also included sketchbook like normal sketchbook paper so it's a bit thinner and it doesn't really take watercolors that well and I also include brown paper at the back of the next sketchbook that I'm going to show you. Initially, I thought that I would need them to do some doodles so I don't have to do too much pencil or pen drawing on the watercolor paper. And I was also thinking about a small amount of space to write down ideas and notes on. So I don't waste those watercolor paper. But as it turns out, after I bought the separate sketchbook, that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I no longer feel the need to do that anymore. In fact, I even tend to forget about those sketch paper at the beginning of the sketchbook. So I end up wasting a lot of paper in the end. And after trying this out a couple of times, I decided for my next coming sketchbooks that I will need to make, I am no longer going to include those sketchbook paper anymore because I'm happy with my current system of having a separate sketchbook altogether. It's just a thought and through mistakes like these, I think that's how I have come to the system that I have now, even though it is still a messy one, but I just feel that it works for me personally. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say for this sketchbook. It is an old one. Looking back, I know I really need to improve on a lot of things, but I still enjoyed making them back in the day. And I can only look ahead and learn things I need to improve on, like the quality of work and tutorials. This next one is probably my most used sketchbook for my YouTube tutorials, so you'll definitely see some familiar pages in this one. I hope you guys are enjoying watching this flip through so far if you're not too bored looking at it. Personally, though, I feel like I enjoyed looking back at the past works and things like that. I don't find this sketchbook tour to be as exciting as my previous one that I did way back when, I don't know how many years ago, because my previous sketchbook tour had more of my personal works and a lot of finished works that you guys haven't seen before. So I feel like it's a bit more exciting, whereas these ones just have past YouTube tutorials. And because I had to turn them into tutorials, I usually limit myself in the steps to making it easier to follow, thus compensating a lot on the quality and finding the right balance so the information is still digestible without me making it too complicated, especially for the last sketchbook that I showed you guys. I do see progress as I flip through this one and that makes me really happy and I hope you guys can see it too, but I don't know, sometimes I just feel like 
a sketchbook tour would be more fun if a lot of you guys haven't seen the paintings yet. I also used to do a lot of portraits and figure drawings if you've seen my older sketchbook tour. But yeah, the more I do YouTube and Skillshare, the more I feel like I want to invest my time to better the quality of tutorials and classes. So I don't actually end up having much time to do personal projects anymore. But hopefully from this massive sketchbook tour, you'll also get a little taste of the behind the scenes of the many repetitions and failures that I go through as I try to build a tutorial, even though it might be a bit confusing to follow through because I do jump from sketchbook to sketchbook. But yeah, though the tutorials may seem easy and it usually only takes around 20 minutes for me to go through it. It does take many, many hours and maybe even days or weeks of planning and repainting, at least for some of them anyway, in order for me to be able to break it down into steps which are comprehensive to paint along to. And I find myself spending way more time than the past years at the planning stages and I really want to keep getting better at that. So I apologize if this isn't as exciting. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I love food illustration, but even when I have a dedicated sketchbook for it, I just haven't had the time to add more into it, but I really hope that I can complete the food illustration sketchbook so I can show you guys at some point because I think it has way better quality works and it's much more detailed and I spend many, many more hours on it than these easier beginner friendly tutorials. So I really hope I can complete that one day and show it to you guys. Anyway, I'm so sorry to ramble on, but getting back to it, I just want to say that this is my favorite spread from this sketchbook because it's just so colorful and happy. And there are only a few more pages left on this one and I haven't figured out what to do with the brown paper right at the back of this sketchbook. So it's just completely empty. And we're finally on to the last sketchbook. This was initially for my food illustration because I felt like a square orientation would look really nice for most food illustration composition. But I ended up using it for my YouTube because, I don't know, I think I needed a square orientation for one of the tutorials. So I'm just going to dedicate this one for the tutorials again. And I'll just make more square sketchbooks in the future if I need it. But yeah, as you can see, I don't really use it that often but I'll try to figure out more paintings that I can fit into this square composition because it is quite uncommon I think in my opinion. I personally actually prefer the A6 sketchbook which was my previous one that I showed you and I'll definitely need to make another one of those without the additional sketchbook paper and brown paper as I mentioned before. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This last one was actually last week's tutorial and that's it for the sketchbook tour. If you're still here, I would definitely have to applaud you for sitting through all that through this long video and thank you so much for watching till the end. Like usual, my social media links will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!